Lier, you were saying that you've been fighting this since the 80s. Now, did, it's only recent, it seems to me that it's only recently the trans, that the word trans now means both actual transsexuals and anyone who wears blue eyeshadow or whatever it is, you know? Um, uh, what, if she, when, when this kind of toxic trans activism that we're seeing now, w did, was that in play in the 80s? Did you notice that happening? Yes, I would say yes. That really? My experience, yeah, my experience, I would say 1982, 1983 was kind of when I got old enough to really enter this whole world. Um, and, was, and what form would it take? So you would go to a women's dance or a lesbian bar or some kind of gathering that was for feminists, and there would be that one guy who would turn up. And at that point in time, other women knew um, that they were bad news, that they were stalkers, that they were violent, that they were unhinged, um, and that they didn't belong there. Even if they were perfectly kind, they still didn't belong there. Um, mm -hmm. But there was always a group of women who would approach him, circle him, and tell him he wasn't welcome. Mm -hmm. And they had no legal right to be there at that point. I mean, it was easy to, to escort them out. That doesn't mean that they didn't do damage, because like all good predators, they know how to find the vulnerable. So, I mean, I can run through all my anecdotes from those years, the, the very vulnerable women, young women, women my age, who were sucked in by these guys, um, you know, in the, the months and years of abuse that would then follow. But they're stalkers, they're obsessive. This is all about a sexual fetish. Um, you know, they're all autogynephiliacs. Half of them are sociopaths. I'm sorry to have to say this so bluntly, but that is who they are. And there are women in, certainly in, in the women's community who have been stalked for decades by some of these guys and nobody does anything. You're not even allowed to talk about it. Nobody believes them. Um, and it's terrifying because nothing stops them. It's like all stalkers, it's, there's no way to stop them. They either they get a new obsession and then they move out of your life or they die. That's, that's the ways that you are free from a stalker. Mm -hmm. So I saw all of that, you know, even in the early eighties there weren't very many of them yet. Pornography had not taken over the culture. I mean, right now, the porn industry is essentially churning out these guys like tribbles. Um, but at that time, there weren't very many. Also, the internet didn't exist. Yes, right? so that, 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 that's what confused me, I think, because I was thinking, I thought I thought of it as purely an, an internet phenomenon. Sorry, I interrupted there you. Were a few. That's, I mean, there were always a few, and they were the ones, I mean, gender identity dis, uh, disorder is what it used to be called. And that was introduced to the DSM-4 in 1980. So they had already had a whole, you know, a whole decade of political pressure trying to get that uh, diagnosis created by the medical establishment and then pressure them to, to include it. And it was so they could get those horrifying surgeries. That's what they wanted, because that's the ultimate expression of their fetish is they want to have you know, like female body parts. So the only way to do that is to get it paid by through insurance. So they had to have some kind of medical diagnosis. So they created that and then they got that put into you know, the medical literature. And then in 2013, I think they had that change to quote gender dysphoria, but it's the same thing. And it's the same. These are, these are political, politically mm -hmm. created entities there. It's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can say that about a lot of diagnoses. I understand that, that there's always, you know, sort of a social component, but this was very clearly, you know, political advocates with a whole bunch of money um, put this kind of pressure on psychiatrists to get that into the DSM-4 so that they could get their surgeries and their hormones paid for. And so that was 1980 when that started. So there's a whole decade before that where they're working really hard to get that done. 